personal name. Hi, my name is Fode Dumbuya. This is my life in design. From secondary school, um, I started to look at how the world works and how designs comes to life and how products are done. But it's a difficult conversation to have in the home, my African home where I come from. Because telling your parents that you want to study fashion design is a, it's a bit of a it's problematic because they will look at it thinking you're not serious. You're trying to study something that doesn't give you any stability, etc. So I think the easiest way for me to get into design that, that doesn't cause any problem in the home is more about a stable side of like, where I get into information design. And I think my dad could easily understand that. My mom, not so much, because my mom is very supportive about everything. It doesn't matter whether she understands it or not, but she just believes that kids are the future and they sometimes have non-traditional ideas. Whereas my dad, he's more like, you can either be a doctor or an engineer for you to be successful. So that's how I end up studying information design because in my, in my dad's knowledge idea, it's like, okay, you're, you're gonna be designing screens, like computer screens that human interact with. So in his head, he's just like, yeah, this is good. This is like more stable career. And then I quickly realized that's not who I am and that's not what I wanted to do. And also the stories that I wanted to sell, tell and wanted to design around, it's more cultural stories and you can't just tell those stories on screens. And I think that quickly helped me to make made up my mind to kind of further being a fashion designer. And then I think I'm glad I managed to have the base of like designing screens and realizing that's not where my career will be. And, and the switch over to tell stories on textiles, illustrations. And I think that's who I am. I connect with humans and cultural stories. Well, I need a platform to, to tell those stories and screens wasn't a place to do it. My parents are my biggest inspiration or were my biggest inspiration because of the way they carry themselves in lives, how they build and raise us up. So it was a big inspiration for me. Normally, in Sierra Leone history, this is supposed to be like a lucky charm. It brings good luck to you. And when we were growing up as a kid, if this is in your room, your, your parents always tells you, don't worry. Um, when they turn the lights for you to go to bed, they'll just say to you, normally it's in a room, you're safe and you'll be happy. You're protected. So it's like I said, good luck, charm and protection. And I grew up with that. So that's why I, brought, I started bringing this to life. Um, if you probably realise it becomes like the symbol of the brand. So I'm developing different characters. But also when it comes to fashion, Dries Van Oten was someone I always look up to. The way he designed those prints, the way he tells stories on textiles and up to like the shows and storefront installation. All of those for me was was beautiful to, to see and follow and inspired by. And I think that helps me sort of like curate a lab room the way I want it, but more from a, a cultural and African perspective with British tailoring. So to combine those two together, and I think that's where you got my inspiration. My mom and dad, they're both from two different tribes, two of the biggest tribes in Sierra Leone. So this is it. My, my dad's tribe is Timini and this is my mom's tribe, it's like a Mende. So we use the Mende 
they use this mask in celebration. So what we've done, we've used both of those masks and we create this print. And also the background of it is just the map of the world, if you can see it. The reason why I created Labrum London is, is to rebel against those negative connotations about Africa, about immigrants, about people movements. I've realized and I learned so much from the, the stories that my parents taught me and the culture, the rich culture, the music, the food. I'm like, this is beautiful, but society make you feel that's not really beautiful. So I have this two thing. It's like society said this, my parents said this. Which one is legit? So for me, I just probably went the path of my parents and then I think which is what guided me to be where I am. And I thought, that's what I wanted to do with Labrum. I want to tell untold stories about West Africa, about London, about black culture, about British culture. When those two intertwine, what does that look like? What does that feel like? This is Labrum monogram fabric. Um, the monogram was done with carry shell, you know, carry shell. So that again, because it used to be currency back in Africa, we've used that as a currency because what we're doing is a cultural currency. So that's why the, um, the monogram has this. I wanted to leave a legacy where about 50 years or so, a kid from London or Africa that looks like me will be able to have a reference point. Because sometimes you can't be, be who you can't see. And I wanted to help those kids have, to be able to do what they want to do, but also believe that it's possible and anything is possible. That's why I do what I do. It's like, I want to be able to leave that as a legacy. Our value is about community. It's about how we bring our community to the forefront of what we do. From day one, it's like telling stories, untold stories. Not just about Africa, but also about British culture because I grew up here my whole life. So I can't just tell one, one side story because I live here and I grew up here and my life is British. So it's like those two worlds is where they collide. It's how we intertwine them. What does that tell you? So that's why I feel like what we want to do is educating people, bringing the community to life, in the forefront of what we do, and then have a platform that just spotlight excellence. Young, black, British, doesn't matter what it is. As long as you have the same value as us, we'll support you, we'll give you a platform. And that's what we do at Labrum. The clothes is secondary, to be honest. Like, it's more about the stories. If we don't have stories, we don't do a collection because it's a waste of time. Infrastructure in terms of like production is is some of the some of the challenges that we face are like getting the right staff to to deliver at the level that we're producing at. Yeah, just getting more opportunity, getting support from the government. I, I feel like the government needs to do a little bit more to support like up and coming brand creatives to be able to to establish and and be around for a long time rather than selling your soul because obviously you can't afford so you have to do everything to make it work. So those challenges, yeah, it's what we we faced and we continue facing but we're trying to rise above it. To be honest, in terms of inspiration is I find them through sometimes traveling, reading books, old ideas from my parents, things I've learned from them um, that I don't see around now and I don't see in the mainstream media. 
my surroundings, my community. I think these people inspire me so much. Sometimes it's like challenges. It's like you've gone through a challenge and you think, okay, if I've gone through this, someone else probably must be going through it. How, how can I educate them or help them to probably come out and get the better side? My advice to them is like, stay true to yourself, believe in the stories that you want to tell, make sure you're knowledgeable about whatever you want to do, and work hard. And it's, it's hard in the business that we're in. Have a plan and make sure you know how to execute it and stick with it. It's not an industry where you come in, make it quickly. Yeah, if, if that's what you want to do, good luck. It's an industry where you have to build and build and learn and build and keep delivering persistently, consistently in the same path for people to actually embrace you. It took me about five years to get to where where I am today and another five years <laughs> to even start being in a place where you feel like, okay, you have a business because you, you have employees, you're making money to keep those going. So if you come into the business, just have that thought that it's not a quick fix. So if you're looking for a quick fix, then sorry, go find another job. And again, I think I was talking about what we do with all our dead stock fabric. So the whole, all the fabric that we use in the collection, so everything that's left over, there's a lady called Masha. She, she will quilt them for us in, by panels. We'll give the, the panels to quilt. So we just quilt this and then we use, this was the other we use as a blazer for the collection. So it's every fabric that we use in the collection. It's kind of like all the leftover parts that we just put into this blazer. Again, it's just a lot of education. I think designers need to be mindful of waste and understanding how can we create a collection to be more sustainable. More sustainable in a sense, it's like everyone has to chip in. But sometimes you have the, the more established brand do something that's slightly just slightly sustainable, but they have the manpower to push that as a story and talk about how sustainable they are, they've done this collection. But what they also fail to realise, they've done this sustainable collection, but they've done 5,000 pieces. They're going to sell 5,000 pieces of a garment. But you've got smaller brands like us, we develop our own fabric, we only make what we can sell. I think it's just, it's just needed a, a little bit more education about what's happening in terms of sustainability and find a, a way where people don't just shout about sustainability, but they're actually doing it, they're implementing it. We don't say we're sustainable because any, every fashion is not sustainable. But what we are trying to do is to be responsible. i got so many ways that I could, I could go with it. That's why I'm just trying to Honing in on one thing, that what does that mean to me? The whole world sometimes follow what design does, what designers does. The world is full of everything design, products, places, houses, and everything. And it's inspired by something, by colors or by people day-to-day -day life. I hope those things can actually touch every part or every corner of people's life to make, make them realise that the world is, is huge. People shouldn't take everything for granted and, and also give more, give back to the world because it's a beautiful place and that's where we all live and it's better to share.